It's a blistering hot day in Gainesville, Florida, as the volunteers come down off the mountain to play the Gators. Harrison Houston, number 84, a senior from Pensacola, and Jack Jackson, a sophomore from Moss Point, Mississippi. Deep to receive for the Gators, John Bexport, number 10, will kick off from for Tennessee. He is from Chattanooga. He has long legs. And the game is on. Well back into the end zone, and Houston is coming out with it. He gets to the 20. He's taken down at the 21. The quarterback, as we noted for the Florida Gators for this ball game, is a redshirt freshman. And uh, first career start for Danny Werfel. His numbers from last week against Kentucky. He had two interceptions. The big man, I think, today in the offense for the Florida Gators will be Eric Rett. Rett is a 214-pound senior. He is a very good running back, and Florida runs five different kinds or versions of the draw play. Here's one right there, with Rett getting about a yard, and that's all. And Tennessee has been eyeballing that play all week long. Now, the people who make it go are the big people up front. Reggie Green and Jason Odoms, for example, started last year as freshmen. They played against Copeland and Curry in the championship game of Alabama, and they graded out 83% against those two All-Americans. So they are really very good up front. On second down, and call it nine, Werfel sets them from just outside the 22. And he's back to throw the first pass of the day. Some heat on him. Pulls it down and waits and waits and waits and throws it to an open spot in the field incomplete. Kelvin Randolph, the fullback, who has not seen the ball all that much this year, had a look at it but didn't have any chance of getting it. The defensive four for Tennessee had a marvelous ball game against the Georgia Bulldogs. They just ate them up. Big Bonham in the middle and is from Alaska. Yatkowski is from Winnipeg, Canada. The linebackers, Kid Ingram and Talley. Talley is the man that probably will blitz the most today. And the DBs can all run. That's a trademark of Tennessee football. They can all run. And here is the first indication of inexperienced at quarterback as Danny Werfel spends the timeout early. They haven't even played a minute yet. Third down and nine, the ball setting just at the 22-yard line of Florida. They play on real grass here at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, Florida Field. Pressure on, pass is thrown short and underneath. There was one man on the sidelines available to him, Jack Jackson, but by the time he was looking for him, there was a volunteer in his face. And so that very initial piece of action probably should read advantage Tennessee. Standing back, uh, waiting for the ball, is number 23, Sean Summers, a sophomore out of Oak Ridge. And he's a burner. Very quick. Florida Marlins drafted him for baseball. One of the better punters in the country is Sean Edge. Has a very good leg, gets the ball high most of the time. Gets some heat and doesn't get that one up. He had to get it out in a hurry, but he's going to drop it from a good roll. And it rolls inside the 25 and out of bounds at the 24. So Shane Edge, in the face of pressure from Tennessee, gets a lucky bounce. Pete Schuler, look at the career rushing and passing for touchdowns. He can do just about anything he's called on to do. He was also a, an all-state back defensive back. Charlie Garner is the top rushing uh, back returning in the Southeastern Conference this year. Brunson is a big, bulky fullback, good blocker. Craig Faulkner, their possession receiver, he and Corey Fleming. And uh, they open up with a single back, three wide out. Charlie Garner is the deep man from the 24 shooter. A little delay for Garner, and just barely gets back to the line of scrimmage, if that as Ellis Johnson, number 61, came firing in for Florida. The people up front for Tennessee, big Bubba Miller anchors the middle of the line. He came back this fall, Bubba, at 290, thinking he was going to be a starting guard. They said, Bubba, we need you to play center. He said, give me the ball. <laughs> Second down, about 10 and a half. This time, they go to a stack, give it... On a quick pop pass to the outside, Florida plays it very well. Kendrick Jones, number 
27, the man catching it. Monty Crow, number 10, is out there to make the defensive play for the Gators. Florida lines up with Campbell Johnson, Carter, and Gaines. Gaines getting his first start of the year. He's been a little slow to come around, but he's apparently in shape now. The backers are all very quick. Inside guys are big and tough. Crow and Hanks will both come at you. The secondary, a lot of foot speed back there with Eddie Lake getting a start today. It is third down and 10 for Tennessee. Out of the shotgun, Schuler, Quick will stop him. And a flag hits the ground. The referee today is Bill Goff. The ball, delay, and the offense. Five yards from the third down. Phil Fulmer was here in 1971 as a winner, member of the Tennessee team. He was an offensive guard. He is from Winchester. In fact, that is the last time that Tennessee won here at the Florida Field was in 1971. Now, Tennessee hasn't played here every year. They've played here only three times since 71 and lost all three. Phil succeeding Johnny Major. Shooter out of the shotgun. Pulls it down. Gets away from one. Eddie Robinson, one of the inside linebackers, the sophomore from Defoniac Springs, brought him down. And now Tennessee will have to go to the punt. Historically, the Tennessee kicking game has always been good. Well, Tom Hutton doesn't have the big average yet, but he's capable of it. It's his third year being the leading punter for the Volunteers. Larry Kennedy is the deep man pressure but Hutton shoots it out of there and that's a very good kick high hanging kick all the way back to the 26 Kennedy is hit once the second time he's hit he goes down but he's got the ball out on the 33 50 yard punt seven yard return here's Jackaroo well Keith you were talking about this being called the swap there are only two schools in division 1a competition right now that are undefeated at home in the 90s one is further south in Florida the University of Miami but right here in Ben Hill Griffin Stadium the Florida Gators are undefeated. 19 consecutive victories. They're going for number 20. This coach, Steve Spurrier, is undefeated here. In fact, he's coined the phrase, the swamp. That's where Gators live. And let me tell you, it's hot enough down here to be in the swamp. Ball is at the 33. Take off that coat. Little pop pass out to Houston. And Houston is taken down after uh, maybe a yard up near the 34-yard line on the catch. Victor Brown, number 16, a senior out of Savannah, Georgia, making the tackle for Tennessee. After two weeks of the season, take a look at Florida offensively in the Southeastern Conference. They lead in total offense, passing, and third down conversions. But look, they're last in the, in the conference. They have the worst record in giving the ball up. That's turnovers, and that is something you do not uh, want to be first in. Verbal pass is good. Completed to Harrison Houston, and that's good for the first first down of the afternoon. The advance is to the 47, maybe the 48 of Florida. It was said as we came on the air, the temperature was in the 90s. If you believe that, hmm, I will tell you the swamp. It's got to be at least 100 plus down on that field, it would seem. But thankfully, it's grass now. It used to be a rug. First down for the Gators, just short of the 48-yard line. Double wide, bottom of the picture, and there's that delay, a little draw play that works up to the 50-yard line. Eric Rett, 5'11", 214, out of West Hollywood, Florida. As a matter of fact, 75 of the 86 scholarship players on the field for the Gators are from the state of Florida. Well, things are pretty grim at Pittsburgh as Johnny Majors goes back there to try to rebuild it. But Ohio State, on the other hand, I'm told is a heck of a football team. Johnny Majors left this Tennessee program last year to go to Pittsburgh. Texas A&M winning big today over Missouri. And Missouri's a team that beat up the Big Ten team last week. So it's, 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 the third week of the season is a telling week. Historically, it's been a week of upsets and surprises. And looks like it's going to be again today. And again, we've got a penalty flag. Good ball foul. False start. 
on the offensive line. Against the Gators. Gators. Penalty, second down. Steve Spurrier in his fourth season, his record is 30 and 8. He's Florida's only Heisman Trophy winner going back in 66. The 19th head coach here at Gainesville. His first head job was uh, the head man over the Tampa Bay Bandits in the USFL. Then he went to Duke, then came to Florida in 1990. Second down and 12. Werfel pass caught quickly to the outside to Darrell Frazier, the senior from Winter Haven. He is chased out of bounds down near the Tennessee 48 by Ronald Davis. That is short of the first down. Darrell Frazier will get some playing time today at wide receiver because of the injury to Willie Jackson. Jackson is the, the outstanding wide receiver for the Gators who injured a knee last year, last week against Kentucky and will not play today. Northwestern beating Boston College, you might say they, that's a big upset, not necessarily. Gary Barnett got a better football team up at Evanston this year. Third down and six. Pass to the outside. Pass is very well thrown and completed to Harrison Houston for a Florida first down to the Tennessee 38-yard line. Third down. They go to blitz right here. These two outside linebackers, the key is the safety is up so close. They're just going to run a quick out over here. Werfel is going to see it. He knows he's got some pressure. Rolls a little bit, gets rid of the ball very aware again we say Werfel making his first start the nerves showed on his first possession he's made two first downs here he pops that thing right off his ear doesn't he uh, a little shot put motion but yep. uh, gets there yes it does goes the other side to Jack Jackson and Jackson is grabbed as the ball arrives and taken down at the 35 yard line that could be a moment ago against the Gators it was their 21st penalty of the year this is only their third game so you got 21 penalties, eight interceptions, seven sacks, and one fumble. And, and yet they're undefeated. And you've won two games. That's right. Yeah. We mentioned they had seven interceptions last week at Kentucky. That sets that ties an NCAA record for the most interceptions and a team still winning the game. Second down and seven from the Tennessee 35. The volunteer defensive front has not been able to penetrate. Long pass to the sideline is overthrown, incomplete. The pass intended for Harrison Houston. Two men covering on the play. Number seven, Jason Parker, free safety, was the principal coverage. Werfel had hit five in a row before he threw that one over the head of the intended receiver, and better that he threw it away rather than have another one go the other way. And a good choice by the young man. Uh, you know, you're not going to complete them all, and when they're not covered, just go it away and come back and try it again. He has a man and incomplete intended for Chris Doring, who was the big hero in the win over Kentucky last week, catching the pass in the last seconds for the victory, but that one he could not reel in, and Doring is 6'4". So that'll bring up fourth down and seven. And an eight no punter on the field. Well, this, this is an area where you, you can go for it. You're on the other team's 35-yard line. And if you punt the ball, you may gain 15 or 20 yards. So I think it's a good... you got a good defense, it's a good call. Russell stops him at 7.59 to go in the first quarter. No score, but Tennessee kind of backed up on its own end of the field. down and seven for the Florida Gators. Tennessee 35. You've got four wideouts on the field. Werfel goes under center. Has a look. Hit from behind. The ball bounces and the penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. Tennessee finally getting some pressure. And the pressure came from James Wilson and Horace Morris. The defensive end. Holding call. A big mistake by Tennessee. It's an automatic first down defensive holding. Take a look from behind Werfel. Five-step drop. He wanted to throw it pretty quickly. 
flag went, uh, looked like it may have been holding uh, on the tight end or the back because the umpire threw it late. Maybe the holding was in the defensive line, uh, holding one of the offensive linemen to let him get free. Huge play there for Florida. Ball is given to Rip, bounces it outside and finds daylight. Tough runner taken down at the 18-yard line. That's the pickup of seven yards. John Saunders now. Keith, last year Northwestern got clobbered by Boston College. This time around, Northwestern with the lead. David Gordon is wide with his field goal attempt. As a result, Northwestern wins it 22-21. San Diego State and Air Force delayed because of lightning, but the teams are back on the field. They'll get the one started in about three minutes. We'll update you. Back to you, Keith. Lightning storms in the Rocky Mountain country. Boy, they're dangerous. Whew. Here goes Red again. And again, bounces outside with it and finds daylight and takes it down inside the 10-yard line. First down and goal to go for the Florida Gators at the Tennessee 7. Huge, huge call on that penalty against uh, the Tennessee. They had the Gator quarterback down. It's like a uh, turnover. Yep. It's like a turnover when you uh, stop him and give the ball back to him. Tennessee defensively. This year in the Southeastern Conference, they lead in points scored and rushing, and they're second in taking the ball away. Put the ball at the eight-yard line, where it's supposed first and goal for the Gators. Rip, a little delay up the middle, a yard. That'll do it. Interior people led by George Kidd stuffed him. Pretty hard to bend Rhett the other way. Well, that's the one play that uh, Tennessee wants to stop. The first play, Larry Marmee, the defensive coordinator, said the, the first play we need to stop is Rhett on the draw play inside. They make a living on that all day long. Call it no game where they mark it. Second down and goal from the eight. to play in the first quarter. Shane Edge will hold now for Judd Davis. The extra point try is good. And so a mistake by the Tennessee defense gives Florida a second chance. They cash it in to take a 7 to nothing lead. And under Spurrier's leadership, Florida has a record of 22-2 and two when they score first. Billy Williams and Nilo Sylvan are deep for Tennessee. Shane Edge will kick it off for Florida. No return. Oh, my goodness. He delayed, waited, uh, bopped around back there in the end zone, and he's lucky to get back out for the 21. So these two coaches are going to faint. <laughs> these kids. First and 10, Tennessee from the 21. Ball is handed to Charlie Garner. Garner is around the corner. Slides out to the 25. That's a four-yard pickup and a little more. The Tennessee tailback is sort of by committee. You start off with Charlie Garner, then you have Aaron Hayden, and then you have James Stewart. And they're all three good. Back they've all three, Keith, uh, rushed for over 1,000 yards in their uh, careers. There's a look at it right there. Put it on the 26-yard line, call it second down and five. Schuler to Garner. And he's to the 29. Sort of searching for a little daylight as Dexter Daniels runs him down. Dexter is from Valdosta. They've been known to send some football players out of Valdosta. Uh-huh. Dexter leads the Gators in tackles this year. It's uh, it's young, but uh, back to two years ago, he was the high school player of the year. 
Third down and three. Umpire comes strutting in with his flag. Umpire is Raymond Carter. Good ball. Both balls. Third down. Could be the crowd. It is a snake pit. There's no question about that. The way the structure of the stadium uh, it is made uh, to a large degree of aluminum and uh, cement. And it seems to capture the sound. And Hold it kind of goes straight up and down. Where last week when we were at 105,000 seat uh, University of Michigan, that, the noise went out. This, it stays in. So it is third down and seven down. And Schuler rolls it out and throws. And it's short. That is man. He had his man, Craig Faulkner. But the ball was underthrown on the run. And so Tennessee's got to kick it away. And the Florida defense is holding up very well. Tom Hutton's first punt today was a 50-yarder to Larry Kennedy, who brought it back seven. Another flag, 51 yards this time and a five yard return. But let's see about the penalties. I mean, there are a lot of bodies flying around on these punts. On the return, illegal block from behind, above the waist, 10 yard penalty, first down. Put it back inside the 20. Next Saturday, you've got top 10 teams in regional action. Most of you will see third-ranked Miami against number seven, Colorado. There will be other regional action. Check a local listing for the game in your area on your ABC station or call your cable operator for games available on pay-per-view. 3.30 Eastern time next Saturday. First down from the 19. Pitch out, penalty flag again. So they'll have to change the laundry at halftime as we're getting one flag after another. It's holding against Florida. So now the Gators make a mistake. That'll be 22 penalties on Florida. 23 penalties on the season. Third game. inside the nine now with three minutes and 57 seconds to play in the first quarter Florida leading Tennessee by a score of seven to nothing the Gators the last two years the most penalized team in the SEC and the ball with a fullback Kelvin by Randolph out across the 15 to the 17 yard line. So he picks up the better part of uh, nine yards on that carry. Randolph the fullback. Not uh, fullbacks and the tight ends in these two systems are not used that much. I think that may be one of the reasons why he, uh, when they throw it to him or they let him run it, he uh, it's pretty successful because they're not expecting it. Steve said yesterday he wanted to get him more yeah, into the offense. More involved. He's a good receiver. On second down and 12, the pass is away. The pass is complete to Aubrey Hill. He drilled it and hit him right on the numbers at the 26-yard line. And that'll leave him about three yards short of the first down. Here's Jack. Well, Keith, you guys were talking upstairs about the noise, especially here in the swamp. Well, the Southeastern Conference has instituted a brand new rule. No longer are students allowed to situate themselves behind the visiting team's bench. In fact, the rule says that the closest they can be is 25 rows up. That's when they've got the Florida Gator marching band today. And they've been tootling along. Thank you. <laughs> Third down and four. It goes underneath trying for the first down, but the volunteers pick it off. Eric Rett 
taken down by Deron Jenkins, a sophomore out of St. Louis. And that'll bring up fourth down. What a catch, though, by Rhett. That ball was thrown so early by uh, Werfel that it may have been called a lateral had, had uh, Rhett not caught the ball. Shane Edge in to punt, 53-yarder on his first effort. There is some breeze, but I don't think enough to bother anybody. Corey Fleming is the deep man, fifth-year senior, for the Volunteers, standing back on his own 35. No pressure. Howitzer. Fleming gets a little help, finds some daylight. Penalty flag is thrown back upfield, and Tennessee is going to be whistled for blocking, I think, an illegal block above the waist, or below the waist. It could also be an old-fashioned clip. Well, if you hit him from behind, behind below the waist, it's a clip. But in college football now, you not, cannot block below the waist anywhere. Illegal block from behind, above the waist, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. So a good return after a 52-yard punt, and uh, they wipe it out with a mistake. After the game, Chevrolet most valuable player picked from each team, 23rd year in the Chevrolet scholarship program, $1,000 going to the general scholarship fund of each school. Moe Phillips and Charlie Garner in the backfield now. Phillips came to Tennessee as a quarterback. Originally, ball given to Garner. Outside he goes and gets about six yards on the carry. This series will be recorded from the 17-yard line as the beginning point. On that tackle, Lawrence Wright and Eddie Lake. And the gain by Garner is uh, close to eight yards. A lot of good running backs left this conference a year ago. Derek Lassick from Alabama, Garrison Hurst from Georgia, Bostick from Auburn. Not much on this one as the Florida defensive people read it, and number 10, Monty Grohl, was in the middle of the traffic. Big senior out of Inverness. Gator defense is tough. We showed you earlier that they are the number one team in the conference. Not only that, but on third downs, their opponents have only converted two of the last 27 opportunities that has been third down in the first down. It's third and four. Well, that's some good old jawbone football right there as Charlie Garner took it and said to Jeff Smith and Bubba Miller, give me a hole, I'm coming. And it looks like it's a first down. Again, very hot. Gonna have to play a lot of people. Garner is out and Aaron Hayden is in. He's a six footer, 211 junior, Detroit, Michigan. End of the first quarter. Florida seven, Tennessee nothing after one. They open with Aaron Hayden and Moe Phillips in the backfield behind Schuler. First down at the 27 yard line. Schuler still got it. Going down the middle with it. And the pass is incomplete, defending Larry Kennedy on the play. And a big squawk from Craig Faulkner that he had his hand on his back and was pushing him, but he doesn't get a call. And the official was pretty close to it. Craig Faulkner is not all that big. He's 5'11", 180, but when he gets down into that secondary and starts rambling around, he's like a sack of tire irons, you know? <laughs> he's, he's hard to get a hold of. He's tough. He had a motorcycle accident uh, last year, had a wrist problem, and he uh, really put football in the spring, decided he missed it too much and came back. He's a tough kid. Brunson is back in there at fullback. Schuler takes the ball, pulls it down, and then takes a lick from Lawrence Wright. I mean, Wright nailed him. But he hops up. From Bryson City, North Carolina, his brother Benji is a, a true freshman on the team. So you got both the Schuler boys playing at Knoxville. There's a look after one quarter of what the two quarterbacks have done. Tennessee trying to establish a running game. Schuler hasn't done a lot. And Werfel, after the first series, has really come on and thrown a touchdown pass. Third down and seven for Tennessee. They'll go to the shotgun. Taken down on a big hit by Mark Kimball. Here's
Here's Campbell. He's just going to beat him to the inside. Doesn't use any anything other than a little arm over right there. Florida has a lot of defensive linemen. They'll rotate them all day. Tom Hutton, the punt. Volunteers having trouble getting it going. Not a very good kick this time. Goes out of bounds up at the 42-yard line, and Florida gets the ball back in very good field position. 13 and a half minutes to go in the first half. That was a 35-yard punt. Monday night. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football will be in Kansas City. Joe Montana coming back to play quarterback after a sore wrist. Big boys coming to town are coming from Denver. John Elway and company. That'll be a heck of a game. Elway and Montana. You think Not the Chiefs bad. won't be smarting after getting whooped up last week? 30 to nothing. They were slapped around. Denver, yeah. big surprise, huh? Two and oh. Got Melbourne out there. Got some young, quick people, quick legs. And Elway knows how to use them. Incomplete pass. Werfel can't throw it any better. Daryl Frazier just didn't hold it. And uh, now again, Jack. Well, Keith, you've been talking about how hot it is. We're almost to 120 now on the Tennessee sidelines. They're using the normal precautions. Ice and big old fans. The same cannot be said over on the Florida Gators sideline. They have get this air conditioning and also a parka that's hooked up to an air conditioner. A teammate can come off, wrap himself in that parka, and get cooled down and get back in the fracas. What, are you looking for a raise or what? Wearing <laughs> that coat? Jeez. Haberdashery award. He's got his suspenders on probably. He just doesn't want to show them. Second down and 10. Got a man. Too high. Too high. He had Doring out there. He tried to touch it in between the defenders and couldn't quite make the connection. So it'll be third and ten for Florida. Werfel has played well, Keith. I'm very impressed. As we said, first time starter. He played in last week's game, came on and won the game for him, and Spurrier gave him the nod. When they're not open, he's throwing it away from the defense, incomplete. And when they are open, for the most part, he's hit them. Gary Dean, of course, had the initial start on the season and is a very accomplished junior quarterback. Werfel almost falling down. Somebody stepped on his foot. That pass completed to Doring coming across the field. That shows you something about the youngster's boy. Regaining his balance, saw the man and hit him right on the numbers, and it's a big play for the Gators. Deron Jenkins brought him down, and Florida is way down on the Tennessee side of the football field. Here's John Saunders. Keith, the lightning was so bad before the game between San Diego State and Air Force, the teams were forced to leave the field. The game delayed at start by about 25 minutes. Right now, they are still playing. It's hail, and it is rain as well. We'll keep you updated. Air Force is threatening, Keith. Ball is at the 33-yard line. First down for the Gators. They lead 7-0, and they're moving it right now. Tennessee defense kind of on its heels for the moment. Brett breaks the tackle, hammers his way to the 25. Sort of sense that Florida is about to take control of this half of the football game. Reds carried six times, picked up 29 yards. Double wide, bottom of the picture. Second down, three. Tennessee, 25. He's a darter. He gets the first down as he goes to the Tennessee 20. Once he gets past the line of scrimmage, then he wants to take on people rather than using that same elusiveness in the secondary. That keeps him perhaps from being a big playmaker. That's a pretty good run right there. He's a tough kid, uh, Keith, and as you mentioned, he'd rather run over you than run around you. with it and completes the pass down around the 16-yard line to Rhett out of the backfield. Rhett came out and complaining after the Kentucky ball game that Florida barely won 24-20 and he was available all night long for that very play right there. Of course, it's always open when you throw the ball downfield and all the linebackers lead him, so uh, they, they get him the ball quite a bit. Uh, he's making his 29th start 
here today for the Gators. So he's been a big part of this Florida offense. Put it on the 17 yard line, make it second down and seven. Werfel is hit from behind by Horace Morris, just as he released the football. Morris is a fifth year senior from Miami, 6'3 and 230. And it was said last week, Horace had a heck of a ball game against the Georgia Bulldogs. That whole defensive front did. Well, walking out of the stadium said, Horace ain't no Horace, that's a horse. <laughs> he really had a huge ball game defensively. Well, he ran around the Reggie Green, the big alt left tackle for Florida, right there, who is really an outstanding offensive lineman. He's only a sophomore, a true sophomore. Third down and seven. Purple's pass is away. short side of the field. We'll get to it in just a minute as we go for the extra point. Judd Davis out of Shane Edge hold. Harold Monk snaps it. Good. Into the short side of the field. Workle is going to read the outside uh, defensive back. And if he's up, he throws it deep. And if he's, if he's back, he dumps it off. Good choice. Billy Williams and Nilo Silver. All oh, the deep people. Two-yard line. Silver, Hunter, ran a 10 6 700 meter Penalty flag is down up around the 31 yard line. Sylvan is buried at the 22. Wait off the penalty. Holding call against Tennessee. Volunteers digging themselves a hole. Go back to the touchdown. This is what Werfel looks at right here. These two defensive backs right here. Now. Doring is right here. He's going to run into the corner. The outside man's going to run here. If this corner here stays up, then he throws it to the long man, which he does. He reads the two corners over there, the corner and the, the uh, safety, dumps it in between them. And Spurrier was tell us, telling us yesterday that Doring has become somebody that you can trust. And when you trust the receiver, you put him in a position to make big plays, and that's why he put him in that position. Tennessee snaps the ball from the 12-yard line. Ball rolling around on the ground. He's going to be down. They're going to call him down, I think. No, they're not either. Matt over here on the side says, no, it's going the other way. The volunteers have fucked it up. I saw him throw the beanbag down there, and then all of a sudden upfield, they say, no, sir. That's a fumble. From behind the defense, Looks like it was a good call. You couldn't change it from what we saw. His knee was not down before the ball came out. Good call by the official. So Garner losing it as he went down. And Florida's got the ball at the Tennessee 30 first down. They lead 14 to nothing. You've got 10-57 to play in the first half. And Werfel gives the rep. He droops and dances, slips and slides, and gets down to the 26. This is the same Tennessee defense that absolutely stifled Georgia, who has a pretty good quarterback themselves. In fact, the Tennessee defense had not allowed a touchdown coming into this game today. Only two field goals in its first two games. Second and six. at the 35-yard line. Werfel goes down on the arms of Steve White. Here's John Saunders. 
He's Syracuse facing Texas on the one-yard line. Al Wooten takes it and just bowls his way across the goal line. 7-3 now is that lead for the Orange. Elsewhere, Georgia blows out Texas Tech 52-37, getting their first win of the year in the third game. Keith. Dogs a little hot today, weren't they? Uh-huh. Still giving up 37 points. Man. They won't get you a lot of Christmas cards in Athens. Nine minutes and 40 seconds to go. Third down and 13. The pass to the end zone incomplete. The pass was intended for Darrell Frazier, defended by Deron Jenkins, and a penalty flag back up at the 40. Holding Florida. This good call by uh, Spurrier and just good coverage by Jenkins. He was there going for the ball. They had one-on-one -on -one coverage downfield, but uh, just defensive won that play. Tennessee discussing whether or not to take the holding call against the Gators. Looks like they will and back them up, try to get them out of field goal range. Senior penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat third down. So from the spot of the foul, it's more than a 10-yard penalty. The ball comes back near the 49 to 16-yard penalty. Texas A&M was a little hot, too. After being beaten so badly by Oklahoma last week, they took it out on Missouri, and Missouri clobbered Illinois last week. Sure did, didn't they? Notre, Notre Dame, after starting slowly, really got it on in the fourth quarter. Yep. That game was in South Bend. Been up in East Lansing, could have been a different thing. Warble gets away from the pressure. On third and 28, runs inside the 45-yard line, down to the 43. Oh, he's got some foot speed, too. He's a big, thick kid. Well, he's got a little about him. He's 6'2", 201. Comes out of Fort Walton, Florida. Tennessee finally getting some pressure on the Gator quarterback. Uh, sacked him earlier and then forcing him to scramble that time. Sean Summers drops back as Shane Edge enters. Edge is number 14 there, the Florida punter. He's had two today, both 53 yards in length. Junior from Lake City. Drifts out of bounds in Coffin Corner. I mean, that is strictly a guess. But oh, where that ball went out, they finally put a foot down on the four-yard line. And he won the first two this year. He's six and all. Volunteers backed up on the four-yard line with uh, Charlie Garner in the backfield. He's taken down by William Gaines, a six-foot, three-five-inch, 293-pounder from Jackson, Mississippi. Those are the games in the SEC today. Defending champion Alabama winning big. Indiana beating Kentucky in the fourth quarter, and Georgia scored 52, but gave up 37. Second down and 10, just outside the four. Pretty hard to check off. Linesman threw the flag. You probably had somebody move. Schuler was trying to check off. You cannot check off that close to the crowd. You can't do it. Encroachment, offense, half the distance. Repeat the down. The field position is so critical in any football game, but Tennessee's field position has progressively gotten worse the five times they've had the ball. They started inside the 20 for the last five drives. Sixth penalty on the Volunteers. Give it to Garner, just straight ahead to the six-yard line. Well, it, it's just foolish to go down in the in the near the end zone of either one either end of this stadium and try to check off. You cannot do it. They won't let you. Well, the punt by Shane Edge was outstanding. Here's a look at Florida's defense today. They sacked Schuler one time, recovered a fumble, and three times and out or less, three or four times they've had the ball. The uh, Florida defense has shut out from making the first down the volunteer offense. Third down, nothing doing down at the five-yard line. The man who made that play was number 61, Ellis Johnson. 
Garner never had a chance. Johnson was in the backfield before he turned up field. And so the Tennessee offensive front is getting a whipping right now from the defensive people of Florida. The trap play, 61 Johnson just gets in enough. Doesn't even touch him, but just scares the running back. Play selection is really limited inside your five-yard line. Putting the punt, standing right at the back of the end zone. Florida going after him. He gets it out. Pretty good kick, considering things. Fielded by Kennedy back at the 49, and he comes back to the 40. Six and a half minutes to go in the first half. Florida again, camped on the Tennessee side of the field, leading 14 to nothing. because you have to play a lot of players. First down, Florida from the 41-yard line. Werfel has been very good in this first half. Florida leading 14 to nothing. Werfel rolling, getting some time, gets his pass away. The pass is off the hands of Harrison Houston. But in deference to Harrison, there was a defender right in front of him and may have even touched the ball. Sean Summers, number 23. He's growling because he did intercept. Yeah. Second down and ten. Werfel looks to me like one of those people, Bob, that senses pressure, feels uh, the pressure, and is able to get rid of the ball just before the collision happens. Again, Crouch is snapping the ball now. It's sending. Here it comes again. See, he delivered it just in time. Look out! And took a huge pounding. But this is Tony Davis. And Davis runs out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Ronald Davis brought him down. So he had a convoy. They set up the screen. And though the Florida quarterback took a pretty good lick, he had the play he wanted at the right time. The quarterback is going to roll, and the offensive lineman will slide out here. And Tony Davis is just going to slide out here. A little screen. The quarterback is the flare control pulling the linebackers with him. The only linebacker that sees it gets blocked, and there's one corner away from he just stalled him long enough to get help and then knocks him out of bounds. That's first down at the 14, the seventh, the different receiver. Davis is the deep back for Florida. That's Frazier in motion. Frazier's got the ball. Frazier is out of bounds. Down at the three-yard line. No, make it deeper than that. Make it the one. has taken control of the football game and particularly along the line of scrimmage. Well, Steve Spurrier has taken over. He is very adept at calling the right plays, knowing when not to throw. Uh, not thrown long, i got to throw the ball long some, even if it's not complete. He overthrew his receiver earlier. Now he ran a little reverse. He just ran a screen. Big play on the screen. Randolph and Red lined up behind Werfel. to a big 21 to nothing lead over the Tennessee Volunteers. Big, big game in the Eastern Division of the Southeastern Conference. Goal line, Billy Williams. First time he's had a chance to do something with it. He comes back to the 21. It has been the custom in this particular series, and this is not a, a you know, really a very old series. It goes back to 96. 1916, but they haven't played every year, and there's a comparison to the quarterback. She's a shoe just simply has done his. Well, it's time for them to loosen the reins and let him do something. They've uh, been trying to establish a run. They have not been able to do it. He needs to become more of a factor in this game. James 
Stewart is the deep back. Can't check off down there. This crowd won't let you do it. Stewart with the ball, fresh legs. And he pounds along for a first down up to the 35-yard line. And a big 210-pounder from Morristown, Tennessee. Here's Jack. Keith, you're absolutely right. Heath Schuler can't check off at the line because the crowd behind me is just raising K. Now, if you take a look, we've measured the crowd noise. And right now, a jet airplane is 121 decibels. This crowd has been 118 decibels already, and they're getting louder. First down on the run by Stewart. Schuler's pass, good, to Fleming, Corey Fleming. And he's close to another Tennessee first down. They really need one before halftime. Otherwise, they're going to go in with their head hanging pretty low. But to go back to the point I was making, winning at home has become the thing because they won. Tennessee won last year 31-14 in Knoxville. Gainesville in 91. It was 35-18 uh, Florida. 45-3 Tennessee in Knoxville. Florida won in 85 here in Gainesville. Well, the point is, the last three games, the home team has won, and it's been a blowout by 17 yep. points. Yep. And part of the reason is what you're talking about, the noise in the home crowd. But Keith, but Heath Schuler has to become more of a factor in this ball game. They got to start throwing the football. Even though they can run against Florida, they have to open it up. You go to the clubhouse, down 21-0 to the Florida Gators, you have a major problem. Tennessee. Second is very short. Almost a free play. Let's it go deep. You can face guard in college football, and Billy Williams was being face guarded by Kedra Malone, and the pass is incomplete. Well, he was open, Keith. You mentioned the free play. They faked the running play. Williams had his man beat, but the ball just didn't get out there. And Williams had to wait for it, and Malone did the right thing. As soon as he saw him reaching for the ball, he knocked it away. So back to the 45 it comes. Moe Phillips and James Stewart lined up behind Schuler. Third down and very short, and uh, he's Schuler for the first down. Runs into Ed Robinson, inside linebacker, but I think Schuler's going to have his first down. He's 6'3", 212 pounds, and stubborn as uh, walnut tree, so you, you're not going to run him off. <laughs> He'll hang around. Here's the linebacker right here, Robinson. The guard's going to come down here, and quarterback is going to sneak right at Robinson. You don't expect this to happen to your quarterback, so I'm going to go behind my left guard. The left guard goes somewhere else, and I get the linebacker. <laughs> Number 83, 5'9", sophomore. He didn't break it off sharply. He had to, in order to get to the ball, really break it off, and he rounded it off. Tennessee has been averaging 44 points a game. Rushing, they've been averaging 290 a game. And total offense, well over 500. They're well short of that today. Second down and 10.
back to court. Around the shadow of the gun. Got all of it, didn't he? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Eight yards back there. You stay there. John Saunders will highlight around the country the scores in the goings on. Have a conversation with Bill McCartney, who's Buffalo's Play Miami next week, and many of you will see it here on ABC. And the Ivy League kicks off a new season. And my old friend Joe Reston is going to quit at Harvard after his 23rd season there, and we're going to miss him. I don't, you know, I wouldn't care if Joe Reston, what he did. If he, if he whitewashed trees, I'd like him. Yeah. But uh, he's yeah. been a brilliant football coach and a great handler of young people. Kelvin Randolph is the single back for the Florida Gators as Eric Rett goes in motion and Danny Werfel throws a pass that is tipped and goes incomplete. It was hit by one of the linesmen knocked up over the head of uh, uh, Jack Jackson. It's a good matchup all day. Morris against Green. Green the offensive tackle. Throws a block to try to get his hands down because he knows it's going to be a quick pass. Morris made the play. Didn't go down. Got his hands up. And Boy, knocked it away. Got both hands up. He yeah. could walk in. Well, that's that's the, the nature of the play. Green was supposed to get his hands down. Second and ten. Not a lot of negative plays on this kid, though. I'll tell you, that pass is a little high intended for uh, Jack Jackson and the pair of penalty flags back around the line of scrimmage. He was past the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball because he threw it out around the 21-yard line, and the line of scrimmage was the 20, so that's a loss of down. Illegal pass. Pass was thrown beyond the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty from the spot. Loss of down. Third down. Steve obviously does not wholly concur, but he was across the line of scrimmage. If that is in fact what he was uh, arguing yeah, about. Yeah. Been something else. Maybe a receiver ran the wrong route. <laughs> Might not have been. He said there were 14 penalty flags thrown on us last week up at Kentucky, and he didn't. He didn't complain a single bit. He said he could have been a, did a good more. job. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe could have been a couple more. Passes away again under pressure. Kid showing the poise. He drills that ball. Hits Jackson for a big first down for the Florida Gators. Well, Jackson is coming down. He's running against the zone. There's nobody running with him. Everybody is just kind of guarding an area. So a lot of uh, poise, uh, Werfel is, uh, Keith. Not getting panicked, not running, not scrambling. To stand back here, biding his time, looking for somebody, and he's doing a nice job. Rift. That'll be another first down for Florida as he moves it inside the Tennessee 44. Ben Talley and Ronald Davis combining for the tackle. And there is Terry Dean, who was the starting quarterback at the outset of the season. Had a bad outing against Kentucky, and he, I don't know. May that's never a, get his job well, back that, now. That, that's a tough decision. He's been here three years, waited his chance behind Shane Matthews, who has gone on to the pros. He had his chance for two games. Werfel came in at the end, won the game, and now Werfel is really uh, looking very good, and who knows what's going to happen. 2.45 to go in the first half. Get the ball to Eric Rett and move it from the 40. Four down to 40, maybe inside the 40 as Victor Brown makes the tackle. There's a look at Green and Morris. 78 Green, as I mentioned, he started last year as a true freshman. At the, you know, there was a thousand and two plays for Florida, and he started every one of them but one. Did Green? The last freshman to start all the freshman games was Lomas Brown at offensive tackle. He's now playing on Sunday. Strong safety, Victor Brown has seven tackles in the ball game. Werfel's pass, on the low, no catch. There's a penalty flag on the ground across the way. Darrell Frazier did not catch the ball. He's short up. Don't beg it too long, Darrell. They'll flag you. The uh, officials are going to need an extra fan at halftime themselves. 
Big win for Toronto there. San Francisco trying to come back and make a race of it. Maybe too late. And American League East. Some struggle. Now, now, looked like it came out. Second down and ten. Next year, or maybe next month, he'll take another two steps back and hit him for a touchdown. But he threw the ball, looped it up over a crowd, and missed his open man. Well, here's his problem. He had two linebackers. The receiver is going to go down here, but he's got two linebackers in his face. Watch the two of them coming in the same hole. The, 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 the point is here, just lay it out a little bit more. Give it a little bit more air. Throw it away from the defensive man and let him run to it. But at least he threw it. On the safe side. Yep. Third and ten. Again a flag. I haven't seen this many penalties since the Battle of Broken Bow. Quick <laughs> game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Which, what was the Battle of Broken Bow? High in the mountains, lad. High in the mountains. <laughs> Seventh penalty against Florida. I think Tennessee's at seven, too. Time he's up. Third down. And 15 for the Florida Gators. As uh, they shoot themselves in the, in the foot here. Well, taking more, a lot of time getting out of the huddle. Goes for Jackson. Short of the first down, if it's a catch, and they're saying no catch. No, it'll be fourth and 15, and the Gators will have to punt it with a minute and 51 seconds to play in the first half. Tennessee has all three timeouts remaining. Fourth kick of the day for Shane Edge. He's had two 53-yarders and one 39-yard pooch. He went out of bounds on the four-yard line. And he has been a, a big, big part of this game, giving Tennessee poor field position. Some pressure on him. Another very good kick. And if it goes into the end zone, it'll come to the point. No, 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 wait a minute. Now, okay, it's got to come back. Well, he started raising his hand and looking at the referee back up field as if he's going to say, where did it go out on the side? No, it went inside that uh, the, the pylon. I know. I'm just telling you what the back judge was doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you got a little reaction from the fans over there. <laughs> He's waving that arm and saying, am I doing the right thing? All right, Tennessee from the 20 with a 142 with a play. Scored the last time on a 54-yard pass play. And the ball off. Run it for two yards. James Stewart carrying, and Dexter Daniels takes him down. And the clock continues to go. Ball's going without a huddle. Crowd quiet for a moment. The crowd's quiet, guys. You better go quick. Here they come. Hewless pass thrown low underneath. By Stewart. Stewart's got a first down and gets out of bounds, stopping your clock. Up across the 35 yard line. Nice. You've got 113. Nice play by Stewart. He broke a couple of tackles. If he could have got by one more, he had some room. That was a poor throw by Schuler, though. Screen pass, little, do it low. Want to get that ball up high where he can catch it and, and work with it. Schuler has got to be the one that leads the, uh, the comeback for the University of Tennessee. Right tackle. Leslie Ratliff went into a set position. Good ball. And then rocked back and forth and got flagged for a false start. Hired. Tennessee with three timeouts. They lose five yards on that misplay. Florida 
show blitz. Now back out of it. Passes away. Pass is caught at the 35 by Craig Faulkner. I think that's his first catch of the day, isn't it? Yep. Pretty hard for Tennessee to win a ball game without Craig Faulkner catching one once in a while, too. Timeout, Tennessee. Two left. 101 to play. Here's Jack. Well, Keith, one of the go-to guys for the Gators all day has been Chris Doring. And, you know, if you look at Chris, you think, hey, he's reminiscent of old number 21 that played for the Gators. In fact, Chris Collingsworth was his childhood hero. Chris Doring, a picture with his childhood hero when he was a Florida Gator. But Doring is now being compared to Chris Collingsworth. In fact, he says he has tried to pattern his style of play after Chris Collingsworth. We caught up with Chris Collingsworth and asked him what he thought about Chris Doring. Chris, first of all, I'd just like to say how proud I am what you've accomplished at the University of Florida. But if you really want to be more like me, man, you've got to get out of that weight room. I saw a picture of you in Sports Illustrated. Your arms are way too big. It's funny how the roles have now been reversed, and I'd like to be a little more like you. I think Doring's a lot better looking. <laughs> uh, you catch as many balls as Collingsworth caught around here. You. Yeah, but that big old They'll thick be comparing muscle, you they some, don't, they some don't help you kid. on the golf course either. Old Chris, he's out there. Big Chris is out whacking that golf ball pretty good these days, yeah. I'll bet you. Yeah. A walk-on. He started as a walk-on. Second down and ten. Schuler throws it, pass is caught by number 82, the tight end, David Horn, and David Horn is at the chalk at the 45 and maybe a half a yard short of the first down. But at least the clock has stopped here with 53 seconds to go in the first half. 21 to 7, Florida leads. And most of that yardage, in fact all of it but one yard, is in the second quarter here. sidelines for the first down out of bounds stopping the clock short of the 49 and 49 seconds remaining as David Horn makes his second successive catch he's a sophomore 6'4 240 out of Jonesboro Georgia Schuler now is hit five in a row 84 yards and a touchdown down play is in the middle of the field to Corey Fleming and Fleming is very close to her first down whistles on the field should be stopping the clock they'll have to look at it and see whether or not Fleming picked it up that's a fast track down there it's in very very good condition you wear the short cleats and you see that some of the people have slipped a bit and timeout is called by Tennessee they have one remaining so Phil Fulmer fussing a bit here Much ado about the winning play of last week in which young Doring made the catch of the touchdown, a 28-yarder. Here's what it looked like, and here's what it sounded like up at Kentucky. Third and 10, 28-yard line. Werfel dropping back to throw, pumps and fires the ball over the middle. It's Doring! It's Doring! He's got a touchdown! Doring's got a touchdown! Oh! I know Dick Vitale was doing football. <laughs> <laughs> this was what they call four vertical, all four wide receivers, straight down, and he found him straight up the field. Back goes Shooter. Hit as he throws in the pass, well defended by Larry Kennedy, intended for David Horn. Actually, the call by Mick Hubert, the radio voice of the Gators, and Lee McGriff, the color man, and I don't blame him. I'd be shouting, too, if I was doing the Gator games, because that was a heck of a comeback. Well, they were behind the entire game. Oh, yeah. And, uh, they, looked, they were picked off late in the game, interceptions, and they finally got one more chance, and they made it. Second down and ten. Oh, my goodness. That's an incomplete forward 
pass, and it was a ball that could have been caught. I don't think Corey Fleming saw the ball coming. I'm not even sure he expected the ball. It went right off his hand. He could have caught that one. That ball should have been caught. Third down and ten now. Behind the offense, five-step drop. Fleming goes just straight up the sideline. Well, he was looking at it. Yeah. Seemed to be in an awkward position somehow. Well, he knew he was in between two receivers. He could have gone up to catch it. Third and ten. Thirty seconds to go. That pass is incomplete. Joey Kent was the apparent intended receiver. He wasn't very close to the ball because he didn't turn it into the middle where the ball was thrown, well, and now it is fourth down. Yep. He was expecting Kent to go to the inside, and when there was a linebacker there, he didn't go inside, he went outside. Bexport has a long leg, we told you that. Give it a decent chance, he might reach it, but they've got to pick up the first down here to give him a decent chance. It's fourth down. Pressure. Shooter's pass is away. He's got a man down there. Well defended. Inners. Touchdown on the ricochet. Billy Williams. Oh, my goodness. There were two Gators back there, and the ball ricochets on one of them, and Williams catches it a 41-yard play. We just showed you Florida's desperation play last year to win the game. That was a desperation throw of Arizona. That's for it for the extra point at 16 seconds to play. It is good. Tennessee probably had 12 men on the field because David Horn, the tight end, was running off the field, and I'm not at all sure that he had cleared the playing field before the ball was snapped. That's 76 consecutive extra points by Bexport. So Billy Williams with a look what I found catching the end zone. All right, you, you saw the extra man trying to get off the field. Here he is right here. Now watch as we'll play and see how far he gets to the sideline and how close. He's still on the field. The ball is snapped and he's right at the numbers. Just, just at the numbers, but going off the field. Now here's the play. Schuler's going to scramble out of the pocket. Top right of your screen is the receiver. This ball flutters a little bit. It's hanging. It's almost end over end. And look at this. A great job, determination of Williams to go up and take it away. Number 80. His first year at uh, Tennessee. With a junior college for two years and a long road to go. Look at this. That's Locke that had the ball number nine, and Williams just took it away. That's a great play by Billy. Yes, it is. Kevin Carter, number 57, was the man in pursuit of uh, Heath Schuler. He's a big guy, 6'6", but he just couldn't quite reach him. And so miracle really for Tennessee Tennessee will have the first snap of the second half there's an onside kick Florida I think has covered it with Michael Gilmore they had the wide outs of the DBs all up the people with the good hands up on the front expecting onside kick Florida's, got a, Florida's got a chance here 15 seconds yep. remain here's a look at the scoring drive 10 plays of course the Hail Mary at the end the 41 yard reception by Williams is marked just short of the Gator 47 yard line. They have one timeout. And they're going to go with three wide outs at the bottom of the picture. Merkel gets it off. He's got Jackson. Jackson out of bounds. Down at the 32 yard line and a penalty flag is thrown back at up where the quarterback let the ball go. Tennessee man picking up on the play. Morris, Horace Morris, having a little trouble getting up. That may be a cramp, Keith. Yep. Holding offense, 10 yards, he's got the foul, first down. That'll be a big foul, because that foul happened back down around the 40. That'll go back near the 30, and the ball was snapped up to the 47. That eliminated at least a field goal opportunity 
for Spurrier and his Gators. There's seven seconds now left. They were down about the 30-yard line. Would have been about a 47-yard field goal. It looks like a cramp. It's a 16-yard penalty. <laughs> well, with the hot and humid weather, I'm surprised that we haven't seen more cramping here in the first half. That's a 16-yard penalty on the holding, followed by a 15-yard personal foul, and the ball comes all the way back to the 15-yard line. So that is an enormous <laughs> They've got to go all the way to the 43 in Tennessee to get the first down. And that'll kill off the clock and the time, and you score at halftime. Florida, 21. Tennessee mounts a comeback to trail by only seven. 21 to 14. Let's take a look at the halftime statistics. In the left column is the University of Tennessee. They almost own the entire quarter. Look at the passing yards, 146 yards for Tennessee. All but one of those yards came in the second quarter. We've got a crowd of 85,247 watching today. That's the second largest football crowd ever in the state of Florida. They had 85,461 for the Florida State game in 1991 here. So Buck Greasy, you and I and Jack Aroop have been involved in the two biggest crowds in State of Florida football history. Tennessee accepting the opening kickoff of the second half. Milo Silver looking to the sideline. Comes across the 20 to the 25. Ball is loose. Ball is loose. And Florida may have it. Malone, number 32, comes out for the ball. So Silver was separated from the football. And the Florida Gators make a break for themselves on the opening kickoff. Well, mixed up right off the bat. Selvin is a wide receiver. The ball comes out clearly out. This is the second turnover for Florida. Bates, number 44, knocks it out. And great field position for the Gators. First down at the 30-yard line. Danny Werfel sets him up. Looks like he's changed the play. Now he sets back the pass, going to try to catch it in. Going to the corner, Harrison Houston, touchdown! <laughs> nice call by Spurrier. This play was not on the books coming out of time but a turnover great adjustment by Houston and a good throw by Werfel just to give him some air he had his man beat get it down there give him some air good play all around and the wall just fell on Tennessee as Davis pops it up and through and just like that in 16 seconds of the second half it is a 28 to 14 ball game. When you see the safety up here, you know that you got man to man outside. Now what you're gonna do with the, this man's gonna run a little hook and the inside man, Houston is gonna go behind him. Now you look to the outside, you read the outside. Bottom left, you got man to man and then you throw it up, over, high to the outside. Good call. Here comes Nilo Sylvan back. He's the man who had the ball get away from him and set off the one play well, touchdown. Story of the game. We said he had to establish the run. They really have not done that, but they went to the pass and were successful. And for Florida, consistency at quarterback. Werfel now three touchdown passes, no interceptions, and he has certainly been the story of the game. Billy Williams and Nilo Sylvan are the deep people with Shane Edge to kick it off for Florida. 
we've used on the 16 seconds of the second half. That's way back. No return by Williams, out to the 20. And so Tennessee that had the momentum uh, going into the clubhouse at halftime because of the performance of Schuler at quarterback, Heath was one for three with four minutes and 53 seconds to play in that first half. He rallied the volunteers and they trail by only seven, eight of 13 for the two touchdowns and 145 yards. But before he can get on the field with the offense to start the second half of play, the Gators have tacked on another seven. So it's 28-14 Florida with Garner lined up behind in the deep back position shooter. And Garner has no place to go as five Gators eat him up at the line of scrimmage. Ed Robinson was the first man to get there. He's been very busy today playing the inside linebacker position. It is second down and 10 for the Tennessee Volunteers. Tennessee offensive front beleaguered to say the least. Schuler pass off the finger of Charlie Garner coming out of the backfield. So that's an incomplete forward pass. It is third and ten, and here's Jack. Well, Keith, that turnover may have had the roof fall in on Coach Phil Fulmer because all during halftime, what he talked about was the performance of the team in the second quarter. In fact, he said, gentlemen, we're going to go out in the third quarter. We're going to put the ball up in the air even more. We're going to try and score by the pass rather than by the run. They've established the run, but now they got problems. Milo Sullivan is in, replacing Billy Williams at a wide out, third down and ten. Pass is thrown to Garner. Garner's the 25. He's got to get to the 30 and he can't do it. Knocked out of bounds at the 28-yard line by Lawrence Wright and Larry Kennedy, and it's fourth down. The Gators continue to be tough on third down conversion. They led the SEC coming into the game, and they're very tough here today. Sorolla Palmer is a new man going deep for the Florida Gators. Tom Hutton, the punt, punches it out, gets good tight spin on the spiral, runs him all the way back inside the 20 to the 17. My goodness, he got away from two volunteers who didn't shut the sideline off to him, and he got about five yards out of a little move to the sideline. had their problem. Eric Rett lines up in the backfield with Kelvin Randolph from Florida. Gators leading 28 to 14. All goes to Rett and he stopped at the 25. A loss of two yards on the play. Number 64 came popping through there. That's big Steve White, a sophomore out of Memphis. 13 and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. It was 21-14 at halftime and on the very opening kickoff. Tennessee fumbled it away. Florida covered it. First play. Werbel hooked up with Houston for a touchdown. Here's that little shovel pass that they used a lot in the championship game of the SEC in Birmingham last year against Alabama. Didn't work. Loss is back to the 21-yard line. So now they're backing up all of a sudden. That's Shane Bonham from Fairbanks, Alaska, and Paul Yatkowski from Winnipeg, Canada, shore up the middle of the Tennessee defensive front. They have been fairly quiet today. Larry Marmee, the defensive coordinator, says uh, on occasion we're not going to rush all out. We're just going to come in under control looking for that draw play, either to red or that little shovel pass. Third down and 16. A lot of room, a lot of time. Pass is off the hands of Harrison Houston. Werfel hit him right on the hands. Admittedly, he was under stress and duress. But nonetheless, the ball was right on his hands. That's a correct score. Uh, the computer, whoever that is, had the wrong score. <laughs> Blame it on the computer. Blame it on the computer. <laughs> Fourth down and 16. 
And Shane Edge is in the punt with Corey Fleming back to receive it for Tennessee. Thunderstorm hanging over the edge of the stadium. Good kick. Tremendous kick by Shane Edge. Fleming can't get away. One man downfield gets a hold of him. Kidra Malone, and he's the guy who recovered the ball on the opening kickoff. So he had two big plays here in the third quarter. That's a 59-yard punt and a four-yard return. CFA College Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. And by New Sierra, it's not just anti-freeze, it's safety freeze. So, and it looked like Fleming might get loose. He's dragged down by a leg at the 24, and that's where Tennessee starts. The ball is thrown underneath to Craig Faulkner. And Faulkner's out of bounds at the 42 and a first down. I think Tennessee's attitude and offensive coordinator David Cutcliffe is the heck with trying to run the ball. We got to throw the ball. We got to pass first and then run as we're moving down the field. But trying to establish a run against Florida is not working. They've got the people that can do it. They've got the quarterback. They've got the receivers. It's just a change in the mindset. There's a run drive. Almost worked for big yardage, too. Charlie Garner goes down after six yards, and here's John. Keith, Syracuse here punts the ball to Mike Adams, who picks it up at the 46, and then watch the nice move right there, cutting back and into the end zone. 54 yards on the return. 18-14, the Longhorns have the lead. Elsewhere, Arizona State trailing Louisville, 21-10 at halftime. Back to you, Keith. Got a pretty good team, I yes, think. Yep. This is Charlie Garner going for the first down, and he's close as Dexter Daniels wrestles him down, and they may have to stop it to have a look at this one. Arizona State, I thought, might be one of the teams to reckon with in the Pac-10, but I saw that Louisville stop. It's a tough place to go play. A couple of the top ten teams lose in Tennessee here in Syracuse. You just saw against uh, Texas. Of course, Florida State plays later. Nebraska is Nebraska winning. They were behind for a long time. Right now, UCLA. Yep. It is a first down for the ball. Hayden's in the backfield. Hewler's pass. Look out. Bad pass. Threw it right to Anton Lock. And no air under the ball. He had a man down there between double coverage and it was just simply a very poor decision by Heath Schuler. The third turnover for the Volunteers and the first interception. Take a look from behind. He's going to look at his receiver right at the middle of your screen. He's not going to see the corner come in from the outside. You've got to see around your receiver. You can't look right at the receiver. You know where he's going. You've got to look ahead of him where you're throwing the football. That time, Lott was there and made the play. And it's first down Florida at the Tennessee 49, and the Volunteers are almost seemingly intent on self-destruction. The ball is uh, thrown by uh, Werfel, and again, he avoids the sack. He avoids the loss. But a flashback to last week's game when Terry Dean was in there, Keith. He he would move from the pocket, but when he decided to move, he took off running. Yep. I think yep. he had uh, 11, 12, 15 runs during the ball game. Werfel, on the other hand, will move around, slide around, give himself some time in his receivers, and has thrown several balls that way here today. Ben Talley was the man that jumped him for Tennessee. Ball is showing blitz right now. They haven't blitzed much today. Here comes, and the penalty stop it. And they save Werfel with considerable abuse because their uh, tally was loose. Bill Goss, the referee. Football, delay of game on the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. That is the tenth penalty on the floor of the Gator. Oh, Steve, he's going to wear out his hair. Rolling up the mistake. Well, this week, the mistakes are happening against him. Uh, well, I should say they still have penalties, 
but no interceptions. Last week, he had seven interceptions. On second down and 15, and off the hands of Chris During, thrown a little bit behind him. So During can't reel that one in. And you, you can tell what he said there, throw the ball out in front. Yep. He had a lot of room in front of him to move to. Now, see, did. no charts, nothing. It's all in his head. <laughs> how much How much time does the kid spend, though, having to learn those funny signals? You know, the kids make them up. Uh, right? Last week, Werfel was giving the signals to Dean, and a lot of times the quarterbacks will make them up themselves, but obviously Steve's calling him today, so... Runs away from that pressure. Runs into the sideline. So again, he, it looks like they're going to get him for a big loss, and he just motors right on out of trouble. Well, talking with Spurrier yesterday, he, we talked about the decision-making the quarterbacks had to make, and the quarterbacks have to make more decisions on the field than anybody else, obviously. When to throw, when not to throw, should I scramble? You know, and he just said that Werfel made a lot of good decisions the week before, and he's continued to make a bunch of them here today. Sean Summers is deep. Shane Edge is in the punt on fourth and 11. So the volunteer defense able to contain the game. Edge has had a good day kicking the ball left in the end zone. The special teams for Florida have been outstanding. Special teams win you football games. At the 20 yard line. They trail 28 to 14. Hand off to Aaron Hayden and a three yard pickup for Hayden. So as the rain, little rain shower is not so little, it's a pretty good little thunderstorm. Sits right out there behind the stadium wall. It hasn't rained inside the, the swamp yet. And the defense of Ron Zook has been active today. A sack and an interception and two fumble recoveries. And three times, I mean, excuse me, five times, they have gone five, three plays and out. And that's what the defense wants. Get out there on the field, three plays, and get off the field. Call it second down and six. A little quick pop to the sidelines, and it's good for a first down up at the 33-yard line with Billy Williams making the catch. Billy is from Alcoa. Tennessee's two toughest games on the road this year. They have to play here in Florida. And they have to play Alabama in Birmingham. Nebraska by four points in the third quarter over UCLA. Schumer lets it go. Receiver falls down. Ronald Davis. Got tangled up and fell down. Ronald Davis is the starting corner, the defensive back for Tennessee. Played some receiver last year. In fact, caught uh, 15 passes and a touchdown, but pulling double duty here today. But uh, probably told uh, Phil Fulmer that he thought he could beat somebody. But he is the starting right cornerback for the Volunteers. Pass is incomplete. And now we join John for the update on the Nebraska story at UCLA. Well, Keith, Nebraska had been trailing in the game, but Tommy Fraser goes to work here. 11 yards, he hooks up with Gerald Armstrong, rifles this one between two defenders, and right now Nebraska is taking the lead 14 to 10. Elsewhere, Miami, the Hurricanes, just a 7-0 lead at halftime. Back to you, Keith. Okay, John. Third down and 10. Little pass flipped up to Aaron Hayden out of the backfield, and Heath Schuler can't get it to him because William Gaines is climbing all over it. Good and point. So it's a tango here for Tennessee, and they'll have to put it. Good point. The pressure of the defensive line. Gaines was in there. Wasn't a long throw. Kick is out. Zerola Palmer waiting for it. It's going to bounce. 
takes a nice great inbound for him, and he ducks away to the sideline. And the penalty flag is thrown downfield. I don't think anybody will get Palmer out of uh, We'll wait and see what it is. Base mask. That's what it is. a little inadvertent. It's almost an automatic flag. Next Saturday, top 10 teams in regional action. Most of you will see third-ranked Miami against seventh-ranked Colorado. Plus other regional action. Check your local listings for the game on your ABC station or call your cable operator for games available on pay-per-view. From the 34-yard line, Florida Bowl. Eric Rett cuts back into traffic and goes down at the 35. Ben Talley on the tackle. You know, we were talking about uh, Ronald Davis, the cornerback, going in and, and, uh, and uh, under a pass. You know, three years ago, the receivers and kick returners on the field for Tennessee were Anthony Morgan, Alvin Harper, and Carl Pickens. And they're all playing on Sunday now. Not a bad trio, huh? Second down and nine. Here they come. This time they got it. Cleanly back on the 25. It was Raymond Austin, number 28, a freshman from Lawton, Oklahoma. You can see it coming. Now it appears that that little rain shower may have stalled about 100 yards <laughs> away from the stadium. If you park on that side, you'll get a free car wash. Third down and 17. Looks for Jackson. First down, Florida at the 48-yard line. Just basically a two-man route to the right side. Everybody was staying in the block because they've been blitzing. The inside man broke to the outside, and the outside man, Jackson, just went down about 18 yards and did a hook, a wide hook, and a nice throw by Werfel picks up a long uh, third and uh, 15. Third and 17. Yeah. Plays like that will win you ball game. This is Eric Rett. Games a yard. <laughs> James Wilson has it. 28-14, Florida. Six minutes and 45 seconds to play. Third quarter. Florida has led the entire ball game. Brett uh, Keith, the only uh, running back in SEC, SEC history to rush for 3,000 and catch 120 passes. He also has an 11-foot pet python snake and an 80-pound pit bulldog. And I would not like to be invited over to his apartment. What he needs is a ranch. <laughs> At least it's a big Screen down the middle. Ritz got the ball. And first down at the Tennessee 37-yard line. That's the first time we've seen that play today. Ben Talley brought him down, and he hit him hard. Werfel looking over to the mentor to call the play. Spurrier sends him to Werfel. Right there in the middle of your screen. Just slides in behind his big lineman. Red is a four-year starter here at the university. A tough kid. In high school, he was a all uh, high school state wrestling champion. Playing running back. On first down at the 37, Werfel's pass is away and just over the head of Aunt Aubrey Hill. Hill has caught a touchdown pass today. We told you earlier, 75 of the 86 scholarship players at the University of Florida football program are from the state of Florida. And you can carry that a little further by the other two uh, major institutions in the state of Florida, Florida State and Miami. May not have that high a percentage, but certainly over 75% of their scholarship players are from the state also. 
Second down and 10 at the Tennessee 37. Try the blitz again. Pass is on the numbers. Good to Doring. Short of the first down by a couple of yards as he's knocked out at the 28. Well, it worked a couple of plays ago, and it's going to try it again. Right here, the two outside linebackers are going to blitz. He's just going to barely get the ball off. You don't like the screen against a blitz because it's tight man-to-man -man coverage everywhere. And it is coverage tight right there, but he just makes a good throw. 18 for 33, 216 yards, three touchdowns for Danny Werfel. And the Florida offense is whipping the Tennessee defense. I want to spell his name for you, folks. W-U-E-R-F-F-E-L. Might as well get used to it. Pronounced Werfel, huh? Freshman. Shane Matthews was a three-year starter and a two-time SEC Player of the Year. Shula's had a, 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 a Spurrier has had a bunch of those players of the year at quarterback for him. This is Gerald Frazier, the sweep coming around to the 10-yard line, and here's John. He's Penn State on the road in the Big Ten. This is the third quarter. Steve Fitz takes it. Nice move to get it back inside, then diving for the end zone. Nine yards. The Nittany Lions up 17 to nothing right now. And Syracuse is now down a touchdown to Texas as they've added a field goal. 21-14. Keith. I can't believe that Joe Paterno is going to plow through the Big Ten, but by come he may. <laughs> That'll be something, won't it? Eric Red is taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Big Shane Bonham, the first man to get there, number 92. And Texas, a seven-point lead over Syracuse, which frankly does not surprise me. Because you can only beat up on the horns for so long. It'd get a little pesky after a while. Well, John Makovic down there has got some good young talent, but everybody wonders, is, it, is this going to be the year that he's going to do something or maybe next? Next. Timeout is called by Florida with three minutes and 50 seconds to play in the third quarter. The Gators still lead it by 14. Third down and seven for Tennessee. They're knocking on the door again, leading 28-14. They leave working along. He's going down the middle. Referee dropped that flag. He was behind it. I think it may come back. when there are no backs in the backfield if your defense you got five receivers spread out is the quarterback draw there's going to be a lane in here where the quarterback is going to come and just go right back up the center the first thing you look for is make sure he throws the ball now look at the center of the field all the linebackers drop out just a good call that he could uh, had a lot of room to run oh third down and very long throw it down the middle and swept away by Reggie Ingram, number 41, a pass intended for Doring. And so now, the ball sits back at the 21-yard line, having taken the touchdown off the board to Werfel's run, and that'll get Judd Davis into the game. Interesting at who Spurrier and the Florida Gators are going to now on third and critical situations. They're going for Doring. Willie Jackson, uh, we told you very early that he's hurt. Yep. He's not suited up for the game. It's sore knee. Davis is kicked and good. Judd Davis from 37 yards makes it 31-14 Florida. Three minutes and 
34 seconds to play in the third quarter. There are the numbers on Eric Rett. We were talking about him some time ago. 17 carries on a day like today is a lot of work. Oh, boy, do you know it. Getting a little bit of a reprieve here with this cloud covering the sun. Yeah, the temperature drops. It feels like 15 degrees. Got a little cool breeze to go with it. Edge will kick it off now for the Gators. Williams and Sylvan are deep for Tennessee. And it's gut check time for the ball. Yep. They're down by 17. of Florida, went to school at Tennessee, and is now the linebacker man up at Cleveland Brown. Cleveland is. And Schuler comes out. Tennessee's best starting position for a possession today has been its 24-yard line. So they have not had much in the way of field position. Very poor field position due to turnovers and the kicking game. This play hasn't been worth a whole lot today. This time they get a little something out of it. Almost the first down for Charlie Garner. This depends on the mark, and the mark is pretty well upfield. It's right at the 30, nose of the ball. But I think he had to cross the 30 to get it. It's second down. And a yard. away. Is it long enough? Yes. Touchdown for Tennessee. Billy Williams. Boy, they can hit At 70 yards. The second touchdown for Williams in the second big play of these days. The key there was, was Schumer. some time. Gordon almost got to him right here. This end is going to rush up field. Now watch him as he gets by over here. The man just going to go deep straight down the field. Good rush from the outside. Five man rush this time. Top right of your screen. Schuler sees him, has some time. Just a streak. And Williams with that great speed just outruns him. Yeah, he's 4-3. If you're interested in such numbers, the point is that he's, he's very quick. But this play never happens if Schuler doesn't get out of that mess. Nope. And then has the arm strength to get it out there. This is the second time that Lott has been beaten by Williams. Yep. yep. He took the touchdown pass right out of his hand. The first one. And if you're wondering, that Lott that we're talking about is a cousin to Ronnie Lott, who... Uh, I guess is now playing with the New York Jets. Tennessee is still in the hunt. Big plays for Tennessee. They Just about every time I'm ready to say they ain't got no feet left. <laughs> They've been shooting them all day. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden they come. <laughs> well, these two teams, two offenses, were first and second in the conference. 
in uh, points scored. So their average scoring play has been 55 yards. That kick sort of hung up in the wind for Jack Jackson outside the five. Almost got a little daylight. And he gets out across the 30-yard line with it. And at two minutes and 37 seconds, load him up for the Gators. single back taking off gets it away in a hurry to Jackson Jackson misses uh, missed by one volunteer and that's just enough to squeeze him loose for a first down Jack Jackson is a sophomore from Moss Point Mississippi Ben Talley is the man down on the field. Probably getting to the point where you're getting some cramp troubles now. Late in the day, fatigue setting in. Atlanta and New York, the Mets and the Braves, top of the 10th inning, tied. They were tied, went over they went 10 last night. Yeah, won the ball game. They've become quite a story down here. The Giants were winners today, six to one, four back. The Giants won yesterday. Giants, in order to, to come back and win the West in the National League, probably don't have to win everything. The way the Braves are going. That just shows you that pitching is uh, pitching is everything in yep. baseball, isn't it? Young arms. Waters had no turnovers today, but they've been hit with 11 penalties. It's first down. Here comes Red around the corner. You watch now. They'll run red until Tennessee stops it. And here's Jack. Well, Keith, we're talking about the great run by Eric Red. Remember, this game last year up in Tennessee is when he hurt his ankle, and it plagued him through the rest of the season. What he did before he came into this game is he served notice that he was going to turn things around. He said, all last year I worried going up across the line. The coaches started to tell me maybe try and slide off of tackles. But today I'm going to go straight, put my head down, and prove to people that the old Eric Red is back. Second down and a long one. Just inside the 45. Werfel should have his first down. And let's check in with John Hunt. Keith, Syracuse in Texas is turning into a great one. Marvin Graves looks like he's going to run it, and then he spots Brian Picucci, who makes a great grab in the end zone. The game is now tied 21 apiece. They're just starting the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, Frank Costa has gone 45 yards to A.C. Tattleson. Miami now leading Virginia Tech 14-0. Keith. Miami, Miami having a little trouble getting their offense going this year. Defense looks pretty tough. Yep, as always. He did get his first down. 106 to play in the third quarter. And the Florida Gators leading 31 to 20. Tennessee went for two after that last 70-yard touchdown strike and didn't get it. Put the ball on the 43 of the Volunteers. Another first down to the 31 with Nick Jester making the tackle. 
He's one of five Floridians on the Tennessee Ball Club from Delray Beach. There's a Randolph, too, number 30, Keith. That's the fullback that throws those blocks. He likes to help people, and not only is he an excellent blocker, but for Eric Rett, but he's assisted some blind people in, in reading uh, by making audio tapes of books. So not only does he help on the field, but he's a first-class citizen all. First down. Red again. This time he runs into big Paul Yatkowski. And the big Canadian takes him right down. Time running out. Third quarter's over. We'll be back for the final period between Tennessee and Florida after this message and the word from our ABC station. Tony Davis is now the deep man in the backfield. Fresh legs, sophomore out of Chipley, Florida. Now he becomes a wideout. Pressure coming. Werfel gets his pass away. The pass is dropped by Doring. He got a penalty flag. May get a roughing call here because uh, Werfel took a lick. week in the Notre Dame Michigan game uh, the Michigan quarterback didn't see it that's a nice sneaky move by a defense Larry Marmee the defensive coordinator trying to get some pressure on the quarterback that time it turned around he got called for roughing mm, uh, that was the marginal wasn't it doesn't matter flag hit the ground put it down on the 16 where it's first down for the Gators. That's contact. Yatkowski. That's another five against Tennessee. Good ball foul. Both sides on the defense. Five yard penalty. After three quarters, uh, total plays are big in favor of Florida in the right hand column, 64 to 46. The yardage is about the same total yardage anyway, and the turnovers, another key. Three for Tennessee and none for Florida. But it's a mistake, mistakes in some total. Both teams have made a lot, but Tennessee's have been more critical. Coming at, at a bad time. Here's the quarterback, Warfel, trying to run it back up the middle on a broken play, and uh, he'll wiggle around and get a couple of yards out of it. He had a first down and five, so he'll be looking at second down and three or four. If we just got word that linebacker Ben Talley for Tennessee has a sprained knee and will not be back uh, today. Played well, seven tackles. He uh, is the leading tackler on this ball club. He'll be missed. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Uh, we'll keep him out for next week's ball game. Eric Rett is back in on second down and three for the Gators. At the Tennessee nine and too much time. They burned the clock. And that'll back them up five. That's happened a lot today. That comes from all this quick wagon uh, plays in. Well, timeline. really, if, 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 if Steve gets the play, the, the, the signal into him quick enough, it shouldn't bother him, but, uh, you know, you, you just get the play, and then you got to make sure you understand the play before you tell the rest of the team, and then then you got to get up the line of scrimmage. Tennessee's been blitzing a lot, so you may be looking around and say, all right, now are you blitzing? <laughs> I don't think I don't think he called it right. Steve wasn't happy about whatever he called. But look on his face. Well, whatever, it's working pretty well for Eric Rett. He's down inside the five goes to the three and he'll have a first down first and goal to go for florida <laughs> so don't be too upset though no, it might have been a, a, a motion or a formation or something like that that he wanted or maybe a single back rather than two backs from the end zone straight blocking nice block there by the fullback randolph helping out his uh tailback rep 
22nd penalty of the game, that last uh, contact foul. 22nd penalty. That includes both teams. First and goal from the three. Werfel. Nope, didn't get there. He reached out and tried to, but the Tennessee man wouldn't let him have it. Deron Jenkins tripped him back. It's a nice play by Jenkins, too, because it looked to us as though he was going to fall over. A little fake toss. Jenkins stays at home. And a nice play. See the official. He started the way and stuck the ball out there. He thought it was going to make it, but then Jenkins pulled him back. He never got the ball over the plane. Dropped it. Pumped it. Werfel dropped the snap. And uh, lost about a yard. It causes that a lot of times. He is the center snapping the ball and then trying to block before the, the ball the snap is completed the defensive men are down there on all fours charging low and the center wants to get down there and block with them and he doesn't complete the snap before the quarterback gets it that's the last thing you want to have to play in the center blame in the center hear that folks Can't quarterback, quarterback blame in the center. Center. <laughs> down there but Tennessee's got his best field position of the entire ball game for a starting possession just beyond its 40 that uh, Williams has been impressive he was listed as a third uh, third string wide receiver but uh, he's going to get a lot of uh, action the rest of the way for Tennessee he's bet on that James Stewart is the deep back Heath Schuler throws. Man who caught it at one time had a first down, but he's on his way back to get the ball, gives up the first down, and here's a flag one more time. Nilo Sylvan made the catch. <laughs> Bill Goss is going to have a sore throat when he gets home. He's been talking too much today. He's had more air time than Jack Aruth. An eligible receiver downfield on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, that'll wipe out the play. Tomorrow night, television's night to shine at 7, 6 Central. The season premieres of America's Funniest Home Videos and the new America's Funniest People. Then all the stars are out in their finery. Hey, to see who will win the Emmys live tomorrow night on ABC. In hot. First down, Schuler getting some heat now. Little flip pass ahead. Gets something out of it. James Stewart, once again, a flag. 
Coming into the game, these two teams were among the most penalized in the SEC. We mentioned Florida is the most penalized, and Tennessee was a couple notches below them. Tennessee after all the conversation so once again they've hurt themselves and uh, that uh, separation between the Braves and the Giants in the National League West now would be two and a half games. Second down. So it'll be second down and 16 as they decline the penalty. Big William Gaines got his first start of the season today, and uh, he's made it pay off. Had knee surgery last year. He was a projected starter for last year and missed the whole year and getting some playing time this year. This is James Stewart. He'll be third and about seven. Maybe eight remaining 11.07 and Tennessee's down by 18 points. This thing hanging down on the shirt tail of Stewart that could protect the lower back. Not a back for music at that. The play action and he's sure to set behind the line of scrimmage number 57 Kevin Carter 6'6 271 pound junior from Tallahassee. Kicking. 67 from the right side of your screen. Looked like it was going to be a little bit of a 57. Is Carter? That's his third sack of the year from Tallahassee, huh? Yep. Tom Hutton. Good kick. Bear catch. Larry Kennedy at the 21-yard line of Florida. 44 yards, punt, no return, 10.09 remaining to play. Considering the state of the scoreboard, 38-20. First down with Tony Davis and Chris Bilkey in the backfield. Right now for the Florida Gators. And Davis carries, runs into Nick Jester, and there's a, not much on that play, if anything. Here's a look at uh, Terry Dean, now uh, firmly entrenched as a backup uh, after the outstanding day Danny Werfel has had. We were told that Dean would play some, but uh, Werfel has played so well in the first half that, uh, you know, I think it's really too late to even put him in. He may, I mean, if you put him in now, you need, he's mopping up. Horace Morris getting a tackle there. We saw him leave with a cramp uh, some time back, but obviously it didn't keep him up. But you know, talking about Dean, as you take a look at these SEC scores, uh, you never have enough quarterbacks. I mean, uh, you know, one play and Werfel could go down. Dean is, Dean had one bad game, and that was last week against Kentucky when he threw four interceptions, and Werfel came in uh, when the job was still kind of up in the air. It wasn't solidified, and... Warrior goes with Werfel, and he makes the most of his opportunity here, and I'm sure he's going to get the nod next week. Third down and 16. That pass is intercepted for a moment. It's called an interception, fumbled, and then recovered by Tennessee. Jester covered it, and Vic, uh, Ronald Davis intercepts it. Davis is number one. Pretty close to holding there. Well, that's the wide receiver, number one Davis. We mentioned the ball comes out very quickly. We couldn't see how long he had it. Obviously, the official from that side said he had it long enough. So Tennessee now with an opportunity at the Florida 28-yard line. James Stewart set back. Gators almost jump. Shuler back. Throws quickly to uh, David Horn, the tight end. Not much of a gain on it, about three or four yards to about the 25-yard line. 
Tennessee has shown that they can score quickly. Certainly they have the guns for it, Schuler and the wide receivers. Setting up a screen. And Stewart, who's reasonably fresh, runs it down to the 20. That'll bring up a third and about two. Charlie Gardner played for much of the day. Hayden has had some work. Stewart some work. Never have enough running backs either. A yeah. little bit of a draw up the middle. That's good for the first down with Stewart carrying as he gets inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. And 7.50 to play in the ball game. the rain. Volunteers are not worried about that right now. Schuler's pass. Look out. Almost intercepted. I think Kent was the man down there trying to make the catch, but there were three Gators all around him. Ball that was thrown a little behind it. Malone has been everywhere, hasn't he? On special teams, he's done outstanding. Yep. Almost picked that ball off. Tip ball. Ball was thrown just a little bit high. And Malone just can't bring it in. Schuler is now 17 out of 30, 270 yards, three touchdowns. They picked him off one time. Pretty good numbers. To the corner, touchdown. Caught by Billy Williams, his third of the day. That kid is unbelievable. Not only is he fast and have some speed, but he can jump. He got away from Malone. Top receiver, number 80. Hey, this ain't nothing. He's just going to go down. He's got his eyes on the ball. He sees the ball. He says, throw it up. I can jump. Get it up there. Tennessee will go for two. Try to make it a 10-point ball game. They won't go away. They've got too many guns to go they away. They They've got the quarterback and the wide receivers. They can come back. Didn't get there. Oh, what a play. Malone again. Kent Rob Malone. Oh, boy. He hit Joey Kent. All Kent had to do was take the ball and fall into the end zone, and Malone was 5'8", 175 pounds. Kent is 6'1", 175 pounds, and Malone just flat decked him. Watch this hit. Well, Malone jammed his guy. Now he's coming back in. He sees it all the way. Thinks Tennessee will try an onside kick. They've got wide receivers, tight ends. They got, the, they got the good hands people, supposedly. Yep. Yep. You want to talk about the two-point conversion? Yeah, in a minute. They kick it away. Larry Kennedy back at the four. Drops the ball! And then covers it. <laughs> Now, how does that happen? Oh, that'll turn your heart over. How, how does that happen, huh? Oh, man. Back on the 14-yard line. Steve Steve got a few more gray hairs on that one. He's got his good hands people out there. He sees them kicking deep. He's got Kennedy back there. And the ball is rolling around inside the 15-yard line. Lucky. He's a defensive back, though. What do you expect? Come on. Eric Rett needing four yards to become the second all-time rusher at the University of Florida, passing Neil Anderson, and he just picked it up. He just picked it up. Only Emmett Smith has gained more yards as a running back at the University of Florida than Eric Rett. That's pretty good company. I'd say so. Is he over 100 yards yet? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. yes. He's got like 120-something. That's his 16th 100-yard game. 
in his uh, Florida career. Got a first down. Moving the chains out to the 29-yard line. 7.20 to go in the ball game. 38-26. Brett into the middle of the stack. Not much there. The reason they keep going for the two is to get an imbalance. Now, see, they're trailing by 38-26, which requires two touchdowns. That's right. And if they would have made the two-point conversion, it would have gotten it down to 10 points where you could have tied it with a field goal and a touchdown instead of the two touchdowns. And the numbers on Eric Reck. And This is only the third week of the season. Second down. Going the other way. Oops, there's a white shirt there. I'll go back this side. Out to the 40 and a first down. Now, I'm going to put him down on the 39. Ronald Davis, the quarterback, had stepped up and was had him in his sights. So he just cut it back in behind the tackle. Final score, Nebraska by one. Nebraska's playing without Jones, their tailback. And Tommy Frazier was playing Gimpy, and he was the only quarterback of any experience they had. Both backups to hurt. Just short of the first down. But it also becomes evident, I think, with that score that uh, UCLA Bruins could be troublesome yep. when you go into their house. The difference a week makes for the uh, Florida Gators. Last week, seven turnovers. Today, only one. Third down and just inches. Furriers has been a college coach for six years, and Keith, all six of those years, he has had a quarterback lead the conference in passing. His wide receiver has led the conference in touchdown receptions, and four of the six years he's been in college coaching, he has had a conference player of the year. Most notably, uh, the quarterbacks uh, spent three years at Duke and three years here at Florida so far. And he has really dominated the offenses wherever he's been. Another first down for the Gators. And they just keep hammering at the midsection with Eric Rett. Keep the clock running. And I think Tennessee just spent a timeout. At 5.42 to go in the game. stories coming in was uh, could Tennessee run and they have only gained 76 yards Eric Brett 138 the Tennessee offensive front uh, lost their battle with the Florida defensive front no question about it deep pass to the sideline Harrison Houston and why, you ask, Florida's running the ball, running the ball, trying to get the clock down. And why do you throw in incompletions? Well, Tennessee has seven, eight guys up there blitzing to stop your running play. And you've got a man-to-man -man coverage out on the outside. You've got all this field to work with. Florida says, let's take a chance. If we hit it, we'll score. And close the door. Five minutes and 36 seconds. Incredibly, Tennessee is still alive. But Tennessee has to gamble defensively. Yep. Jackson and coming across with Jason Parker. Sort of overran it. Well, coming into the game, we said the story for Tennessee was they had to establish the running game. They didn't. And for Florida, consistency at quarterback, Werfel, has been consistent three touchdowns 231 yards only one interception now florida's going to give up the ball five and a half minutes to go 
Sean Summers is deep for the Volunteers. Another rain cloud hanging over the stadium, but not raining yet, so it's quite dark. Lights are on, long kick by Ed. Here's one, oh, that's a penalty against Tennessee. Penalty against Tennessee for illegal blocking downfield. And guess who drew the foul? Malone. Pedro Malone. <laughs> Absolutely, number 32. He's been incredible. Shane Begno, a defensive back, a freshman, was down there trying to get him out of the play, and he couldn't get position on him. On the return, illegal block from behind, above the way, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Watch the left side right there, 26 blocking on Malone, and that's it. He doesn't knock it down, Malone makes the back. Now the Volunteers have got to start at their own nine. Schuler's pass complete for eight yards to Billy Williams. It'll be second and two. The clock stops at 514. It's a long way to the other end of the field. Ball two, comes out to the uh, 17. These two teams, two offenses keep very similar in that they use a lot of three wide receivers and no tight ends, except Tennessee likes to try to run some. Second and two, a little one-hand grab by Mose Phillips. Mose Kenters past the marker and makes it a first down at the 24. And I think when you're on the road in a hostile environment such as this, Keith Schuler and the Volunteers, you need to run the ball because, number one, it quiets the crowd if you can run the ball and take time off the clock and don't let a, a, an offense like the Gators get on the field. Short stuff over there. That's dropped by Mose Phillips. They're taking the short stuff. They're giving him seven, eight yards on the sidelines. He had made the catch, stepped out of bounds, but that time uh, he dropped it. That is second down and ten. The ball resting on the 24-yard line, 5.06 to play in the game. Schuler trying to go down the middle with it. The ball was slapped away by a big William Gaines. 6-5. He had a man open, too, if Gaines doesn't knock that ball down. That's a 15, 20-yard gain at least. And Corey Fleming is in the middle. He's been quiet since the first half. Number one. That's why he's Ronald playing, Davis. That's why he's playing defensive back. <laughs> Ball hit him right on the one. He's the young man that was a wide receiver last year, converted to corner defensive back because they needed some depth there. Good enough athlete, and now he starts on defense. Fourth and ten, back on their own 24. Either this or forget it. the 30-yard line by Mose Phillips, but Kendra Malone is there to take him down short of the first down. Well, I'm not sure if Malone ought not to get a vote for MVP here, the way he's played. You need about 12, 14 yards. Schuler runs out of the pocket and really gets into trouble. He would have stepped up. He would have had some time. Cross by the receivers, playing zone. Malone is right there. He, he's got his good vision, Keith. He doesn't take his eyes off the quarterback. He sees what's happening and when the ball is coming. And so now all Florida has to do is just bang away. 4:40. Eric Rett runs it down to the 25-yard line. And next Saturday we've got top 10 team action for you, as you see. Many of you'll be looking at Caldo Rado and Miami out in Boulder. And in that, uh, you know, that's altitude. And the Canes are coming from sea level. 
Colorado is at Stanford tonight. Second down and four for the Gators. Rhett be a little bit short of the first down. Ronald Davis on the tackle for Tennessee. Our crowd today was 85,247, second largest football crowd ever in the state of Florida. Clock keeps on ticking. Tennessee's got two timeouts remaining, but this is not the place to spend them. What you got to try to do here is keep Florida out of the end zone. 38-26 ball game, 12-point lead for the Gators. Raiden, we're going to call a timeout. Run the clock down. So timeout call leaves Florida with one. And CFA College Football on ABC Sports has been brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By Amstel Light. By State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Lay's, America's favorite potato chips. That you can't eat just one. The book on Billy Williams, and we may not see him anymore, though we'll see about that. He has five catches for 140 yards and three touchdowns, and three touchdowns ties the University of Tennessee single game record. That's the story on him. Werfel, 19 of 38, 231 yards. Three touchdowns and one interception. And that's the way it looks unless we have the earth-cracking miracle here in uh, Gainesville. That's what the Eastern Division standings of the SEC will look like. It puts Florida actually in a position where they, they could probably afford to lose a game. Assuming that South Carolina is going to lose another game. Yeah. Because if they tie, if, if, if Florida and Tennessee tie, head-to-head -head is the first uh, tiebreaker. And Florida, by, the by winning this game, will have the edge over Tennessee. Eric Rett picks up what appears to be the first down. They'll stop the clock and have a look with the chain at 3.15 to play in the ball game. So time out for having a look here. The most valuable players for Chevrolet's award today are Billy Williams of Tennessee. We gave you his numbers. And uh, Danny Werfel of Florida, the quarterback. He looks surely to be the starter next week. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. 23rd year of this. Rewarding outstanding students for academic achievements. And uh, helping those who need the financial help. The Gator schedule... They have Mississippi State now on October 2nd, which means they have a week to heal. And then at LSU and then at Auburn. And uh, SEC games. The uh, Gators will then go on to Georgia, Southwest Louisiana, then they play over at South Carolina. That's why you kind of want to handle that one tenderly. The last game of the season, November 27, Florida State. Right here at the school. and one for the Gators. Burned the clock, didn't he? No, he's got some time. He got the snap off in time. I don't know. Maybe somebody moved. The ball stalled on the offensive line. Five yard penalty. The Tennessee schedule, they have LSU 25th, then Duke. Then they play at Arkansas, and they lost to Arkansas last year, didn't they? A big upset. Then they go to Birmingham to play Alabama, but they get South Carolina at home. But uh, November 6th is uh, kind of a bump in the road. Doesn't count the standings. But I think Howard Schnellenberg has got a pretty good football game up there. Mm -hmm. Judd Davis is in for a 42-yard field goal drive. And the door just clinked. Spurrier, I think, is just one to give this young man an opportunity to build his confidence, and now he's got his field goal kicker going strong, too. I think the outcome was decided, but now he's got, uh, now he's got all of his uh, 
Well, he's already he's put Tennessee weapon. in a position where they have to score three times. Yeah, well. Literally. You noticed on those schedules that we showed you that Alabama, who is ranked second in the country, is not on the Florida schedule. Nope. That's just uh, the way the schedule was set up. Change in years to come, but last year's SEC championship game was between Florida and Alabama, and it might well be the same way this year. And very good chance for a rematch in the SEC championship game as the Florida Gators jumped out to a lead early on in the ball game. Tennessee came back in the closing moments of the first half to close it to 21-14. Uh, uh, but then on the very on the kickoff, the opening kickoff of the second half, Tennessee fumbled it away. Tennessee recovered one play, stuck at the end zone, made it a 14-point lead at 28-14, and they've been pretty much in control since that time. That's uh, Nilo Sylvan and Billy Williams uh, waiting for Shane Edge kick. That'll come from about the nine. This is Williams. And he's out to the 49-yard line where Shane Edge brings him down. Monday night, ABC Sports goes to Kansas City. Arrowhead Stadium for the Kansas City Chiefs and the Denver Broncos. Live on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, and Joe Montana will play. Should be a great game. Two premier quarterbacks in the NFL. Raining now. Big quarter size drop. Schuler looks for the sidelines and goes out of bounds at the 49, just about the line of scrimmage. There's the rain. Here's John Saunders. Syracuse in Texas, 11 seconds left. Pat O'Neill from 33 yards. It will not hook back for him. It is wide. And 21 apiece is the final. San Diego State and Air Force, a great one in the whack. Marshall Falk with his third touchdown rushing. They're tied. Second down, 10. Schuler throws it out ball is caught on the bounce by Stewart he's got enough of it to flip it up in the air and then made a catch and picked up about five yards so that's a win for Texas 21 21 time that's exactly right big win for a tie but it's a still it's a, a big boost for that program Joey Kent. I wonder if Corey Fleming is hurt. I haven't really called his name the whole second half. Miami well, mean, uh, goes up 21 to nothing in the fourth quarter. I mean, that is a helping range. First down. 29 yard line. Schuler's pass caught by Moe Phillips. And Phillips is out of bounds, just short of the five yard line, with a minute and 53 seconds to play in the ball game. 41 26, Florida. Remember last year's game, there was a heavy downpour in the second half up at Knoxville. Big win for Arizona there. Garner with the fake. Joey Kent with the catch and a touchdown for Tennessee in a pouring rainstorm now. Rain held off for most of the day. But it is really coming down, and Schuler drills it to Kent, and Schuler's numbers now are 25 of 41, 355 yards, five touchdowns, which ties the University of Tennessee record. And the players have seemed to have lost some intensity with this rain coming down. Certainly not Tennessee, but there was nobody near him. On the Logator was near him. Going for two again, and now they're stopped. But remember, with at, at four minutes and 53 seconds to play in the first half, Heath Schuler was one for three for one yard. They didn't throw at all in the 
first quarter. Harley threw it off. Now he's 25 of 41 for 355 yards and five touchdowns. So Tennessee's approach is run the ball. We want to mix run and pass. They came in to this ball game averaging 290 yards per game on the ground and only 212 through the air. But uh, the ground game didn't work today, so they went to the air. Michigan had the week off, so did uh, the other folks. Those are games tonight. Well, if they make this team, it's 41 to 32. You make it, it goes to 34. 41 to 34, you're only seven points down. You get an onside kick. This game is not over yet. Yeah, the Fiddler may have left. some tough conditions to try to move the ball offensively. But the Florida defense has got to wake up. This is still a ball game. Garner will be the deep back. Horn the tight end. Williams top of the picture. Schuler pushes it. Caught. Garner, he's in there. And it's a 41-34 ball game. Outstanding play by Schuler. Got out on the perimeter, kept it alive. The man did not quit. They've been down all day. They were down 21 to nothing. And they have come back. Here's a look at it from the reverse. Number 10 is Grove. Nice flip outside, nice and soft, easy flip for him. And Garner gets the score. Now, you've got a slippery pick to deal with here on the onside kick. I mean, it is pouring. You know they have no choice. They've got to go the onside kick. And all of the wide receivers, all of the soft hands people will be up there for Florida as they were before. They may lose this game, Keith, but you got to give them a lot of credit for coming back and fighting. 146 to play. 41-34. I mean, this is like trying to catch a slippery watermelon seed right here. take the ball. Here's another look at the touchdown. Look at the top of your screen. Top of your screen. Nobody near him. Whoa. He just barely hung on, didn't he? I didn't remember it being that loose. So now Tennessee with no timeouts remaining. Danny Werfel running around is taken down short of going out of bounds, so the clock should keep going. Looks like he may be hurt grabbing his uh, calf. Because that would just be, probably would be a uh, cramp. cramp. Clock continues to roll. So the Florida Gators, and for all the world, it looks like they will continue along undefeated. Tennessee will absorb its... Uh, First defeat of the season in what uh, seemed to be a ball game well in the hands of the Florida Gators. But all of a sudden, a few minutes ago, it got pretty snug. And Tennessee uh, trying the onside kick could not come up with it. Here's Worker running around. You don't care about yardage at this point. All you want to do is uh, run and run and just kill the clock because Tennessee can't stop it. And the pouring rain has impacted some of our equipment, causing some of the troubles for the picture, creating a relatively poor picture, as you can well see. 
But now it's just a simple matter of uh, the clock running out because the volunteers can't do anything about it. But it was a noble try after they dug themselves a big deep hole, and the Florida Gators are going to win this football game apparently by a score of 41 to 34 unless they give the ball away. And Steve Spurrier will continue undefeated since he came here to the University of Florida. He has never lost a game, coached a loss on this field. This will be his 20th in a row. He calls this field the swamp, and if it keeps raining much harder like this and much longer, it will be a swamp. loud today. Wait till you hear it then. Florida State comes to town. That'll do it. Your final score. The University of Florida, 41. The University of Tennessee, 34. The winning coach, Steve Spurrier, Bill Fulmer for Tennessee.